All right, Shalom. First off, I want to give all praises to Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, Bashem, Rakakwadash. Double honors to our apostles and elders, a great millstone, and Shalom to the Aki Mater, preaching his word in truth and sincerity. This is Brother Shamar coming back with another lesson, and you know, this is like a more of a, um, you know, update on the news with the, the, dealing with the, you know, the other variant that's out there that they've been speaking about here and there. And it's basically showing you that, like, brothers been sent, mentioning here and there about it as far as, like, the people that are going to be blamed for it spreading are the people that didn't take the jab. And you can already see that narrative being built and it's just being pushed out there, you know, at a, like, a low, at a low level as far as, like, being mentioned here and there. And then once, you know, it comes to the point in time where <clears throat> whenever they want to, you know, lock stuff back down again. It's ultimately going to be blamed on the people that didn't want to take it, you know, and that's basically what this is showing you right here. And it's, you know, they're putting 10 on it pretty much, you know, with the, the title shows you in itself how they're going to push that propaganda heavy and how these people are actually going to just believe it, you know, because they believe whatever Esau tells them. All right. So I'm going to read this a uh, little bit of this article and they hit it some precepts. This is from um, CNN, and it says the unjab people are uh, variant va factories. Infectious diseases expert says unjab people do more than merely risk their own health. They are also a risk to everyone if they become infected with, um, you know, the disease. Infectious diseases specialists say that's because the only source of new uh, <clears throat> variant cases are the only source of new variants is the body of an infected person unjabbed people are potential variant factories dr william scapner a professor in the division of infectious diseases at vanderbilt university said the more unjabbed people there are the more opportunities for the virus to multiply Scaffner, a professor in the division uh, of that medical center, said, when it does, it mutates, and it could throw off a variant mutation that is even more serious down the road. All viruses mutate, and while the jab is not particular mutation prone, it does change and evolve. Most of the changes mean nothing to the virus, and some can weaken it. But sometimes if a virus develops a random mutation that gives it an advantage, better transmissibility, for instance, or more efficient replication or an ability to infect a great diversity of hosts. Virus, viruses with an advantage will outcompete other viruses and will will eventually make up the majority of virus particles infecting someone. If that infected person passes the virus to someone else, they'll be passing along the mutant version. If a mutant version is successful enough, it becomes a variant. But it has to replicate to do that. An unjabbed person provides that opportunity. So you can see basically how they're pretty much painted that some people that don't take it you're going to be the host for it and then it's going to go it's going to mutate be in you and then transfer over to somebody who took the jab and supposed to be safe from it but now they're not safe from it because it mutated and you're the host and all this other you know crazy stuff basically that they're making up in the story but like I said, you can see that they're already starting the propaganda little by little, you know, so that when it does uh, have its, the next um, outbreak or whatever later down the road, whenever that may be, then they have a track record and be like, see, we mentioned it here and there that we was warning people they didn't listen, da da da. And ultimately, you know, blaming it on the people that didn't take the jab. And so the next time when they do um, <clears throat> a lockdown, 
it's going to be blamed on the people that didn't take it. And the people who don't want to take it, a lot of them be, you know, uh, so-called the, the proud Americans and and then um, Jake's, you know, that just don't rock with Esau, period, when it comes to all that. But the first scripture I wanted to get is First Thessalonians 5 and 1. But of the times and seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. And that's exactly how this is, this um, next, um, you know, pandemic, whenever that happens, is going to come. It's going to come as a thief in the night, where it's just going to be literally out of nowhere, just like the, um, this time or last time, you know, when it, when this first initially got locked down. You heard about the stories here and there, like you didn't necessarily hear about it too much on the mainstream media, but if you were online, you seen articles here and there mentioning it in different countries and whatnot. And then what? Later down the line, boom, it came over here, exploded, and then everything just got locked down overnight. And you could see the same thing repeating itself again as far as the stories being told here and there, mentioned online about the different variant, as well as being on mentioned on the um, mainstream news, you know, here and there about the different little variant that's out there. And then what? When everything, when it does so supposedly get out of hand, then it's going to just be a repeat, but on a different level. And they're already going to have the system. This time, they're going to have the system in place to uh, handle it, so-called, because they already went through it before. So now they're going to have a whole different type of system already established and set up for when they want to lock things down to know who's actually jabbed and who is not jabbed. And they're going to have it all, you know, uh, connected to their to their system with the, you know, chips and everything else like that <clears throat> verse 3 it says for when they shall say peace and safety then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child and they shall not escape and is that not what they're basically telling you now they are there's warning here and there about it but they're saying overall this is why you need to take the job because you're safe from it if you take the job and that every and there's you know everything's back open as of now you can go out, do what you want to do. You know, in stores, they're saying if you got the jab, you don't have to wear a mask. If you don't have it, you need to keep a mask on. So <clears throat> they're basically, you know, telling you that everything's, they're working on things, getting back to normal. It's peace and safety. We have enough people that took it. It's still, um, you know, asking more people to take it as far as the jab goes. And, you know, everything's good pretty much. If, as far as the narrative that they're telling you, you know, the jobs is um, the unemployed numbers are going down as far as people applying for unemployment. That's going down, you know, everything so-called looking on a brighter side, according to how the media is pushing it. All right. But what when they say <clears throat> peace and safety, suddenly that destruction is going to come man, and later down the line, it's going to be made manifest that it was never good in the first place. All right. You're just going to see things happening. You're hearing one thing, you know, on the media, but you're going to be seeing a total opposite when you're out there on, on the streets or, you know, your day to day doing whatever, you know, whether it's inflation happening and prices. All right. More crime going up. All right. Whatever the case may be. You're going to see these things not being cool, not being OK, not being safe as they claim. All right. <clears throat> and it says that they're not going to escape. So when these things happen, you're not going to be able to escape it, man. Just like when the lockdown initially happened, you couldn't do anything. You couldn't go anywhere. You wasn't taking no flights nowhere, you know. They literally stopped everything. So you couldn't literally they couldn't do nothing. So how much more when the second go around comes, you know? Because they already did it as a test trial trial to see how people would react and how they would do it. And now that they got people desensitized to that whole lockdown measure you know when the second time comes around people are going to be even more willing to do whatever it takes for their so-called safety you know but we already know that these things are coming that's why it says that we're um in verse four but bre ye brethren are not in darkness that that day shall overtake you as a thief because we know the uh the trickeries of the devil man all right we know the witchcraft that Esau uses to, to deceive the people 
and the trick to people. We know the things that he's coming with. He's ultimately getting ready to come with that great wrath. And we know that ultimately he wants to um he wants to destroy our people, you know. He wants everything to be completely out of chaos. The um population to be lower to what? 500 million, you know. We un we already know what his whole agenda is through the spirit of Yahabashim Yahushai. So this isn't going to overtake us as a thief in the night. Who is this going to overtake as a thief in the night? That's the masses of our people, you Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans that believe that this place is going to continue on forever and that believe that um <clears throat> that believe in America, basically, you know. Thinking that it's cool to be here and that we're going to continue to be here forever. You're going to get caught up in this thing as a thief in the night when it comes, man. All right. Because nobody's expecting this. They're just carrying on. They're literally just, you know, don't even know what's going on. I don't know what the hell they're thinking, but people are just carrying on their life day by day. Not even questioning the fact that stuff was locked down. How it just bounced right back to being open. One moment is deadly. The next moment is cool to take mask off. You know, nobody's questioning nothing. You just, just a complete zombie, you know. Just rolling with the wind wherever it blows you. All right. But that's the state of the people in America. And that's why it's going to come and get them as a thief in the night. All right. And the next scripture I wanted to get is in Micah. The second chapter. And it's Micah 2 and 1. It says, Woe to them that devise iniquity and that work evil upon their beds. When the morning is light, they practice it because it's in the power of their hand. And this is what the elites are doing, man. They they devise these plans before it happens. They already planned it out way prior to it going down. It's the reason why things happened the way that it did when the lockdown happened. It wasn't a, you know it wasn't a, a coincidence, all right. It's the reason why they said you need to take a jab in order to be safe. It's the reason you know why they're um saying to wear a mask, not wear a mask. Everything has a reason behind it that they did it for. And ultimately, it's part of their agenda, man. All right. But this is what they do. Sit there and devise these different little plans and whatnot that they want to do. All right. And then what do they do? They execute it and test these things out on the people to see how they will react before they go deeper into it. You know, like I said, they already done um, lock things down to see how the people would react. You literally couldn't do anything dang near. Couldn't fly nowhere, so you were stuck in your state. You know, you could barely go city to city. Stores is closed a lot of the times. You know, mass lines. All right. And people think that it's over now since it's supposedly back open, but things are going to get even worse later down the line. And they're they're going to build up, like I said, but slowly build up the narrative to have that story be pushed. And then when it, the situation explodes... They already been pushing that narrative out there. So then they already been brainwashed the pe masses of the people to believe that it was already something that was a, a possibility that built up and actually happened. But this is the least that actually plotting this, man, on the people. And they practice it because it's in the power of their hand, man. All right. This is why they do these things. And ultimately, because they they know that they have a short time. Like it says in Revelation, man. All right. This is Revelation 12 and 12. Therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil has come down unto you having great wrath. Because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. And this is why he's pushing all these different things behind the scenes. Before the next situation explodes. Because he knows that he has a short time. All right. And these people are so simple. That's why it's going to come as a thief and a knife to them. All right. They don't know what the hell is going on. They don't have a clue what's going like happening. They here one day. They there the next day. You know, they're just literally living day by day, but not even knowing what's coming. All right. And on the other hand, Esau, he knows that his time is running out. They're literally devising, planning, meeting up, plotting how they're going to do their next moves while y'all just living in a rat race, you know, like zombies, man. And that's why it's going to come and it's going to overtake the masses of our people as a thief in the night, man. When these things go down, they never would have expected that something like this would happen because you don't even know who your enemy is in the first place, man. 
and that's why it's going to uh, overtake you as a thief in the night, and you're not going to be able to escape. All right, you trust in Esau and his ways. You don't trust in Yahweh, Hashem, Yahweh Shai, and you believe everything that Esau tells you. So then, when all these things go down finally, all right, you're going to be through. You don't have anybody to to um to protect you, all right. Because the scriptures say the Lord is our, you know, our protection, basically. Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, that's, how, that's who is going to protect us in these times to come. Because we can't physically protect ourselves, man. All right? If it came down to a point to where you literally can't go anywhere and buy a meal without having a jab or, you know, uh, um, you know, RFID in you, then what are you going to do? Are you going to bend the knee and... Do whatever it takes for you to survive, or are you going to depend on Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai for your for your daily bread and to be able to maintain until this place is destroyed? All right, that's the times that we're coming into, to where you may not even be able to work a job, basically, because you don't want to um, do what they what Esau requires, and which is he which he's requiring more and more out of you in order to maintain yourself in this society, man. And this is where it's getting to, to where we're just going to um, solely depend on Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, man, for survival. All right? Which is why we should be building up our faith and connection with Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai now prior to these things taking place. So that we don't end up like the rest of our people are going to end up that are out there stuck and through. Because we already know where things are heading, all right? Like I was mentioning in um in the first Thessalonians in the fifth chapter, all right, that we're not in that darkness, that that day should overtake us as a thief, man, because we know that these things are coming, which is why, like it says in Proverbs, you know, uh, hold on, let me grab it. Yeah, a prudent, a prudent man perceiveth the evil and hide of himself, but the simple pass on and are punished. Which is why us being the prudent men, how do we hide ourselves? By being in the spirit of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, because we see the evil coming. All right, we're seeing it prior to it happening. So we should be preparing ourselves for these things to come. All right, so that it doesn't catch us off guard. It's going to catch these people off guard, the simple ones. All right. They're going to be caught off guard and punished. But the many Yahabashim Yahweh Shai and the, the ones that who be, true believers are Yahabashim Yahweh Shai, all right, we see these things coming and we're watching these things, preparing ourselves mentally and spiritually for these things to come to pass because ultimately the only thing that's going to be able to sustain us in those times is the spirit, man. You know, Isaiah 33 and 6. This wisdom and knowledge is the only thing that's going to keep us steady in those times to come. All right. Hey, so with that, you know, I'm going to wrap up and give our praises again to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shai, Bashem, Rakakwadash, double honors to our apostles and elders, the great millstone, and Shalom, Tata Akim out there preaching his word in truth and sincerity. Shalom.